Good morning, everyone. We will get started in just a few minutes. Welcome to Tamar Up Studio, to our now traditional Saturday morning live event. I hope you're doing well this morning. As usual, let me know in the chat box uh, how you're doing this morning. Are you ready to paint with me? How is the weather? We have pouring rain here in Houston. I guess winter is finally here. Might as well be, it's end of November. So it's cool and raining. We do need some rain, so that's good. So talk to me in the chat. I'm uh, streaming live uh, on my YouTube channel at the same time and on my Facebook page, Tamir Up Studio. Hopefully you're watching me in one of those places, but if you want to switch, you have a couple of option to, uh, options to do so. And as usual, the replay will be available after the event. So if you need to leave early or you um, want to watch it one more time, you know, you can do so very easily. All right, I'm looking on YouTube, guys. Um, let me open my Facebook page so I can see your comments there too. Alrighty, guys, if you want to comment on, on my Facebook page, please feel free. Uh, let me tell you. All right, somebody's chatting with me. Hi, good morning. Um, let me tell you about my setup, guys, so you know what to prepare if you want to paint with me. So as usual, I have my regular watercolor supplies ready. Uh, today I will be painting on a um, watercolor block. This uh, The brand is Kilimanjaro. I really like the paper. It seems really good quality and not super expensive. I mean, watercolor paper, it's 100% cotton. As you see, it says um, right here, but it, it's a little more economical than, than some other brands. And the thickness that I like is 300 pounds, which is um, 140 grams. Uh, so it's really thick paper, and the reason I choose the paper because it's very sturdy. It doesn't warp if I use a lot of water, and it can withstand many, many layers of watercolor while retaining the brightness and the saturation of color. Because paper has so much thickness, it can absorb all the water, and um, it just makes the, the colors look more saturated and brighter. It's just easier to work with. So the, uh, the size is 10 by 14 and it's a block. It's glued on all sides. So very easy to work with. And I use a little roll of um, tape just to give it a little bit of an incline. It's mostly for uh, to make it easier for me to see what I'm doing here. Uh, so today we will be painting this winter uh, scene, little winter subject. Just getting in the mood for upcoming holidays. Um, I don't know, let me know if you have any snow yet. We sure don't in Houston. Uh, and we probably don't want it <laughs> when, you know, this city is not built for snow. Uh, so this is the subject I picked. And to paint snow, I will be using, I will be using watercolors to paint the whole scene. And to paint snow, I will be using white gouache. So the color that I'm using is titanium white. The brand is M. Graham uh, and it's artist gouache, which means it has the same binder as watercolor and I can very easily use it with watercolor. Another type of gouache that's very easy to use with watercolor is uh, designer gouache. So if you have artist or designer gouache, you should be all good to go and you can mix it with watercolor, paint it on top of watercolor and you can paint watercolor on top of uh, this type of gouache. If what, if what you have is acrylic gouache, you know, it will form a film on top of the paper and watercolor will not adhere to that film. So you have to be careful how you use acrylic uh, products with 
water soluble product like watercolor. We will get to gouache a little later to talk about opaque white some more later. Um, what else do I need to tell you? I didn't draw anything on my paper because I like to start with a very loose kind of uh, free flowing wash. Uh, if you want to sketch the pine cones and the branch, I would do that with just a few lines very carefully. Uh, because as you know, once you apply watercolor on top of pencil, you can't erase, erase it. And our painting will be fairly dark, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the pencil lines will probably completely disappear in the watercolor. But if you tend to paint a little bit lighter, a little, a little more kind of um, uh, transparent watercolor style, then you have to be careful about pencil lines. Um, and I think we can draw with the with our brush and I mean if pine cone is a slightly different shape that's in the reference photo or you know you move it a little bit I don't think it really matters so that's why I'm not too concerned about the drawing because this is not a geometric subject it's not perspective or anything like that it's kind of very uh, natural scene you know and I don't think we need very precise drawing for that so we'll just start on white paper with a free-flowing wash. Alrighty, we have um, about five minutes left, guys. I just want to give everybody time to join and to get the paints ready and see what I have set out and uh, maybe prepare their own materials because you're welcome to paint along. The link to the reference photo is posted on my YouTube. Uh, I think I posted it in the uh, on Facebook page as well and it's also on YouTube in community tab on my channel so if you click on my picture you will end up on my main page of my channel and there will be some tabs there and if you click on community you will find the reference photo there but I also keep it on the screen so everybody can see and paint along with me we will try to do this in a, about an hour I don't want to keep you too long on Saturday morning everybody has I'm sure a bunch of stuff to do um, so we will be working fairly quickly and I know some of you like to watch first and then paint watching the replay so whichever works for you is uh, is fine good morning Arlene sunny and cold in Maine well that sounds nice um, so maybe going for a walk after this live session will be a good idea um, let me tell you about the colors that I will be using. Basically today I will be painting with uh, secondary colors and the set that I'm using, my favorite lately, I bought it a while ago and I seem to be painting with it more and more, is Daniel Smith's um, secondary set, that's what they call it. And the colors are quinacridone, burnt orange, undersea green and carbazole violet, so orange, green and uh, purple are our secondary colors as you see this is the uh, the swatches are of these colors so you can see what they look like when they dry purple looks dark it's not very dark it's actually very intense purple and um, as you know um, those um, secondary colors as, as well as uh, primaries, wh why we call them true secondary and true primary colors, because when we mix them, they create black, or you know, if you dilute it, it will be gray color. And we will use that when we paint. So um, we will be mixing a lot of colors out of these three. I will probably be using some additional greens just for variety. Uh, I really like my cascade green that I have it's a cool green also by Daniel Smith and I also like my uh, viridian so it's also it's a transparent green very few greens are transparent actually uh, so viridian is one of the few that uh, looks really good on paper and it's very cool it has a lot of blue in it but it's not dark right so it's a kind of nice uh, soft green on the cool side so if you're interested um, those two pigments i recommend adding them to your palette or at least getting like little five milliliter 
um, tube and trying them out uh, before you buy a bigger tube. I have big tubes because I, I like those colors and I use them all the time. Um, I painted with the secondary set a lot. If you watch some live videos uh, on my YouTube channel, you will see that I use that set quite a bit because I find it very versatile. It just seems like it works with a lot of subjects, with landscapes, with animal paintings, with still lives. I seem to be going to, that, to those secondary colors more and more every time. So another thing to consider if you're thinking about adding some colors, I think secondary set would be essential. Hi Beth, Beth is finally watching live today. That's nice. Alabama is cold. Yeah, I guess winter is coming everywhere here in the States. I don't see any international watercolor lovers this morning. We usually have somebody from Germany, from um, uh, Africa. So hopefully the, some international audience will join us a little bit later as well and give them give everybody just another minute to join and we will start painting so before we start painting we need to prepare our watercolors i am going to spritz them i already spritzed them a little bit but i'm going to do it again just a little spritz of water not too much or you can just use a brush and add a little water to activate them and i always spray the whole palette even though i'm not going to use every single color i don't want to you know limit myself if I want to maybe I change my mind or I want to do something different during the painting process. I want all my colors to be ready. Alrighty. I'm looking on Facebook and I see somebody from Vancouver actually join us. Welcome. Hi Christine, welcome to Timer Up Studio. Alrighty, guys, I'll step in a little bit. Oh, somebody else from Canada is watching. Hi, Bonnie. Alrighty, um, I'm going to get started, guys. I'll stop in a little bit um, to answer questions, so don't hesitate to put them in the chat box. Uh, I will be checking and answering. And if I don't answer your question, I'm sorry. Uh, nobody's helping me today <laughs> to monitor the uh, the questions and the chat, but. If I don't answer, I will review all your uh, messages after this live session and I will try to answer or comment on Facebook. So just keep an eye out for notifications or come back later and check because sometimes, you know, Facebook doesn't always send uh, notifications, but I will try to respond to everybody. All right, let's start painting. I'm going to use my big brush, an inch and a half angled brush by, this is by Princeton, my favorite and we will start painting i think we need to start painting on wet paper i want to, first thing i want to do is create that really um, kind of blurry abstract background i am not going to worry let me put the reference photo right here so you can see better for now i am not going to worry about the pine cones of the branch or the snow so i want to paint kind of abstract cool green uh, background and then I will paint everything on top of that because if you ever painted watercolor you will know how difficult it is to paint to preserve white paper so we don't want our life to be difficult we want you know to have fun and paint something in an hour and not spend days and days on it so I will show you a technique how to paint this really quickly in a loose kind of free-flowing manner so that's my goal today and as we know, to paint loosely and for colors to mix and run, we need to have damp paper. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spray it from my spray bottle. And because my paper is thick, it's 300 pounds, Kilimanjaro, I am going to spray it quite a bit. If you're using thinner paper, like 140 pound paper, don't use too much water because it, your paper will be too saturated and it will warp too much and it will be hard for you to paint. So depending on the thickness of your paper, even I had a puddle of water here, but I picked it up. All right, and without further delay, let's start painting. Going with, um, let's see, I'm going to go with undersea green, a deep green color. 
cool color. I'm going to throw it on here. I am going to throw on my burnt orange maybe to create some slightly warmer areas, hinting that there is something in the distance. Some more on the sea green. And I can also immediately drop in some purple. I have some splattering, which I like. And I can immediately start mixing all these colors together. And I'm kind of hesitating, guys, because I haven't painted very much this week. Uh, so it's hard to get started. But as I keep moving, I'm adding more pigment. Don't think that you need to make a puddle and then, you know, um, apply it on paper. It will be too diluted. So apply paint directly on paper. The water on your brush and on paper will be enough to dilute the watercolor. So that's my advice. I'm thinking about splattering. This brush doesn't splatter very well, but you see, um, <laughs> my paint application is getting thicker and thicker. Of course, I don't want that purple, so I'm just going to neutralize it with my green. And when they mix together, they create kind of beautiful purplish gray. So a lot of pigment, just trying to create, I'm trying to think what are the colors. Maybe let's try some indigo as well to cool it. I I'm trying to create a cool background so it will push back away from me. And I'm not preserving any white of the paper or anything like that. Working fairly quickly as you see, right? Because I don't want the paper to dry on me. Okay, need to smooth this out, of course. Let's see, this area is fairly warm. How about our... Viridian, I'm trying to apply Viridian, guys, but it's just too transparent. It's too weak for this color. So let's go back to undersea green. I think this is good, actually. I'm curious to see what, what you're telling me in the chat box. So I'm getting distracted with the chat box, but I'll concentrate on creating the background, which is basically done. I'm just thinking maybe I should make it darker or maybe not. I think it's good. I'm trying to create kind of these areas, make them darker a little bit right now. Just want it to look like saturated and interesting. I don't want it to be all kind of, you know, weak and too pale. Okay, I think this is good. I saturated my paper as much as I could. I'm going to dry it. I need to move this a little bit. So you see with my brush strokes, I try to hint, I, I made those kind of feathery brush strokes, uh, trying to hint at some distant branches. I don't want to paint, you know, the branch and the pine needles and stuff like that, because it's at a distance, so we will not see the details. So the whole point of this initial layer is to create uh, the, the background, right? The distant view of something that resembles to the viewer a forest, right? That they will imagine that there are some branches in the distance. And then we will work on top of that. So this is my first layer. It looks like, <laughs> like a big mess, but hopefully it will all work out at the end. Um, so we need to let this dry. So I will talk to you about other things for a second, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. If you missed the beginning, if you have questions about my materials or my setup or anything like that, just post them in the chat box. Um, I'm looking at on Facebook as well. I think no questions there so far. Everybody's saying hello. Um, let me tell you a couple of things, guys. Um, my website is kseniaanis.com. That's where I publish my classes. If you go to the store page, you will see all the classes. 
uh, right now we don't have any sales going on but we will have a big sale on black friday like everybody else who want to participate uh, there will be big discounts on all my classes i create classes on water media painting if you're seeing me for the first time you just joined um, uh, that's kind of my materials and that's what I paint with. So watercolor, gouache uh, are my favorites, mixed media, combining watercolor and gouache with different materials. So I have a lot of classes and they will all be on sale on Black Friday. And to get notification of the sale and to get the coupon, I think we will do a coupon on everything, uh, you need to be on my mailing list. So that's how I'm going to notify everybody. And to get on my mailing list is very easy. Just go to xeniaanis.com, sign up on the homepage, or I have a couple of eBooks on watercolor painting. They're called watercolor brushstrokes and uh, guide to lighting. If you hesitate a little bit how to paint light and shadow, especially with watercolor, uh, you might want to take a look at that eBook. They're totally free. So go ahead and download this and you will be on my mailing list and I'll notify you about the Black Friday sale. All right, uh, let me dry my painting. I talk too much, I need to <laughs> get painting here. It's drying by itself, but of course it takes too long. Uh, so I'm going to use my trusty little heat gun. This is the heat gun specifically made for uh, craft purposes. So it's not super hot and it doesn't blow too hard. Uh, like a hair dry wood so it doesn't move the paint it doesn't you know damage your paper or anything like that it's a very very handy tool so have a few people from Canada today that's exciting let me know guys how is the weather in Canada I'm curious probably a winter there already I would imagine if uh, even it's cold in Houston even <laughs> so up north it's probably full-blown winter Joyce is here hi Joyce nice to see some familiar names in the chat box okay this is getting better and you can see guys especially with this heat gun it kind of happens right before your eyes how much watercolor lightens when you dry it, right? It just, I think that's one of the reasons people find this medium so challenging is because it changes, right, when it dries. I mean, all paint changes a little bit, but watercolor changes drastically. It uh, lightens quite a bit when we get rid of water. So we need to account for that. And that's why I was telling you, don't make puddles, just pick up paint out of the wells with a damp brush and you will get nice saturated results. Yeah, let me show you the uh, brush. Thank you Arlene for helping with the comments. Uh, so here's the brush that I'm using. So it's Princeton Heritage. I have three of those in different sizes and they're re I really like them so I recommend those I mean Princeton I think is a good brand but it doesn't have to be Princeton there are plenty of angled brushes on the market to just make sure they're suitable for watercolor all right so this is my background guys and it looks pretty dark but that's what I wanted right because I want to create a certain mood with my painting uh, I will show you a little bit later some paintings and I will talk more about the color palette. I just mostly in this demo I wanted to show you like the same colors, the same secondary set can create totally different results depending how much of each color you use or if you add one more color like yellow or you don't. So it's just um, kind of interesting experiment in color theory I think. All right, need some more, need a new paper towel and we can move on to the pine cones. So obviously I need to switch to a smaller brush and I am going to paint the pine cones on top of this and they will, I will tell you in advance, they will probably be too dark 
we will not be able to paint the lightest areas which are these orange kind of highlights that we see on the pine cones but it will be fine because i'll show you what we'll do we will do uh later we will um our gouache, white gouache, will help us with that. So let's just uh, paint some sort of a shape. Let's see, where we do we want to place them? I want to them not to be like smack in the center, right? The composition-wise, it's not going to be right. So I probably want them somewhere here, like they are in the photo, a little bit higher and to the side. So I'm going to just outline them roughly with my brush. Then the, the lines are not... Um, straight right that kind of textured so that's what we're going to do and um, another important consideration guys in this case you definitely want to apply paint directly from the wells because you you're painting on top of watercolor already so you need good saturation and let's paint this one try not to make it super flat this this middle brush is uh, three quarters of an inch so i have inch and a half three quarters and half an inch and then i have a dagger brush and i kind of go through them as i get to details okay so this will be the second one does this one look good i think it needs to be a little bit larger maybe so let's add a little bit always good to make these decisions before we get too far so this will be the pine cones and i need to obviously paint shadows on them so to paint the shadow i'm going to mix actually in this case but again with no water just as saturated as it's possible i'm going to mix purple with burnt orange and i get nice dark brown color which i don't have on my palette but which is always very helpful and we see it a lot in nature that kind of warm brown and i can make it darker or lighter depending how much purple i add they will connect to the branch somewhere we'll get to the branch in the middle in a minute so just maybe turn it on the side a little more and paint the texture on the pine cones the shadows you want to pay attention to the outsides because it's very characteristic shape right of those pine cones so create that shape with my brush Okay, so here are the pine cones. What else I need to do? I need to add the branch kind of lightly somewhere. And we talked about it, guys, right? When you paint branches, it's not a very good idea to just kind of draw a curve because it will be hard to do. It's not going, might not go as planned, right? So it's always better to paint with kind of sections just easier to control the brush that way so there will be a branch here somewhere here there's something here that we can add kind of hint some more pine cones maybe there and we can use I'm, I don't think I'm well let's do like maybe hint at something here as well but we're going to make this very soft I don't want super defined branches on this side okay and now we need to do the pine needles again um, we will be working from larger form to smaller forms and kind of sounds funny on this on the scale of a branch but just try to think that way and not paint every needle so we need to create those lighter green shapes and uh, I should say lighter more saturated green shapes to bring that branch forward and create the, the shape of the branch let's see what color this is obviously viridian so let's try viridian it might be too light for this but we'll try okay so 
again, this uh, dagger brush, uh, I'm sorry, the angle brush really helps me because I can use it on the edge, on the thinner side, and I can very easily create the shape of that branch. And here as well, it's I see kind of light colors. So let's do this here as well, feathered brush strokes. Okay, and some in the distance. I'm thinking maybe distant ones can be darker, so I'm switching to Cascade Green. And if you want to know more about my tools and colors that I recommend, how to pick colors for your palette, how to, you know, in general start painting with watercolor and some initial exercises, I have a class that's called From Zero to Watercolor Hero, and uh, it will be on sale on Black Fridays. So keep an eye out for notifications if you're interested. If you know, you, you're not painting with watercolor yet, but you would like to try it, I'll explain everything you need to know in that class. It's called From Zero to Watercolor Hero. I'm thinking maybe a little bit warmer green on this branch, see what happens. Just the chance for us to go through all the greens and throw them on there and play with them and have a good time. Still using those kind of feathered brush strokes, guys. So um, working, starting to go into some details now. I kind of uh, created overall shapes of those branches, but now it's time to I think start thinking about details a little bit more. All right. Um, so we have our shapes figured out. Uh, this kind of are glued together, which I don't like. I am going to darken. I'm, I'm going to paint a shadow on this pine cone. Or try to intensify the shadow, I should say. to separate them a little bit and uh, maybe intensify some shadows on this one. They kind of go in checkerboard pattern. Okay, and um, I have a lot of glare, guys. Let me look at it. Okay, I think it's fine. Seems like that pine cone is a bit lopsided. I get a bit of distortion, so let me straighten the shape. Yeah, this is better. I want it to be vertical and the other one a little to this side. Um, I think we can do some darker areas on the branch and kind of between the, the needles. So the same, um, I have that brown here. Let me mix in some indigo into it. Oh, that's really nice, kind of dark purple color. I know it's hard to see for you guys. Let's see if you can see it on camera a little better. So it's very dark purple. So I'm not using black, right? Black will just kill that picture because um, a lot of black pigments are very warm and we don't want our shadows to be warm, right? Because that will invert the perspective, they will start coming forward and we don't want that. That usually looks very flat if you do that. So trying to keep things cool here with cool color mixtures. And I know this doesn't look right because we don't have any white, right? We covered up all the white, but it will appear eventually and just, I'm getting to it <laughs> very close. Um, so, for now, we're painting mid-tones and darks, so we're not painting the lights and the highlights. Okay, guys, and if you want to let me know in the chat or in comments, 
What are the subjects you're interested in? I already have a list of your all's recommendation, but if you thought of something else, or this is the first time you're watching this, let me know what your interests are because I want to create content that's interesting for everybody and you know for my viewers. By the way, my YouTube channel reached 8,000 subscribers yesterday so thank you all who subscribed and who is watching that's very exciting i know it's not a huge amount by youtube standards but it's a lot for me and i never thought i will get there but I'm, I'm very happy that people find my content helpful and are watching my videos because i i see a lot of views on my channel and a lot of comments and that's that's just you know makes all the effort that i do you know invest in creating content all worth it to see that people are really finding my videos useful okay i want to make this darker but it might be okay we can lighten it if need to be so the pine cone is a spherical shape right so the darkest shadow is not going to be on the edge right that will make it flat so the shadow needs to be a little bit away from the edge. The edges need to be lighter and that way we'll create the curve, right? And we will add the highlights as well in just a second. So keep that in mind. Don't bring the shadow to the very edge. I'm going to splatter just my background looks a little flat. I think it can use a little more variety. And now we're coming to the exciting moment of applying opaque white we need to paint the snow that was the whole point of today's exercise right i'm spraying the splatters to soften them to give them more variety you can also kind of soften the edge a little bit cincinnati is cold Yeah, we <laughs> thank you, Jess. Yeah, we're getting there. This is by no means done, but we're getting there. Um, let me clean my palette. We are going to move on to painting snow, guys. Let me pause for a second and let this dry, though, because I don't want my white gouache to float everywhere. Uh, let me talk to you, let me show you some paintings and talk to you about uh, watercolor palettes, right? How uh, versatile just three colors can be in creating different mood and painting different subjects so if you joined me a little while ago we painted these mushrooms and they were painted with green orange and purple with an addition of yellow and the result cannot be more different in the mood and in you know in uh, general kind of atmosphere of the painting you see just adding yellow creates so much sunlight and such warmth in the painting that the same colors look totally different uh, than this. I did not start with yellow underpainting on this because in winter, you know, the sunlight is very kind of cool and watery. It doesn't color everything with that warm yellow like it does in the fall or in summer. So by eliminating yellow and starting a little bit differently with the same colors, I get a totally different mood. So I just wanted to point that out, guys. Uh, let me show you some other paintings that I have here. This landscape that you also saw in one of my live sessions, it's similar to this one, right? In the mood, no yellow, just cool uh, greens, uh, purples, indigo, and we create that cold winter day. Um, and you know the the birds that I added during the live session make it uh, even more kind of um, moody and wintry looking. So um, knowing your colors and knowing how to create that atmosphere is very important. Another winter day. This is one of my popular tutorials on my YouTube channel, uh, painting winter, but 
what did I do here a little bit differently? So mostly the colors are very cool. I used indigo, I used uh, royal blue by Cinelia. Uh, I added orange and there was a reason for adding that orange because those uh, street lamps cast a warm glow in, on everything. And I think that landscape looks very attractive because there is a contrast between that warm glow in some areas and the coolness of the rest of it. So again, we're creating atmosphere with very limited palette, with very limited means, but um, you know, very effectively, I think. So let me know <laughs> what you think too. Maybe you don't agree with me. And again, a couple more examples. This is one of my early watercolors, but I think it was fairly successful. See how much yellow I used. I even made the sky yellow, and I think it works in this case because in the fall, it's like we see that golden glow everywhere. Uh, this was in France, and um, uh, there was just a lot of warm colors. I did contrast them with some cooler colors on the, um, on the water, but um, uh, yeah, in general, I managed to create the illusion of that warm fall day. And here's another landscape, even if we don't paint winter subjects. Uh, this is actually early spring in Texas. Uh, a lot of subjects, are, uh, a lot of elements of this landscape are cool. The water is kind of blue green. The boats were all white, kind of cool colors. But because it's early morning, the sun is not high yet. It, 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 its light is not intense. Uh, so the overall uh, impression of the landscape is of very cool colors. So cool colors don't have to be gloomy or wintry, right? Even to create different times of day, we need to choose our colors kind of thoughtfully and give it some thought what we're going to do. I did warm up the landscape with a little bit of pink because when I was painting all those greens and blues, it was just all too, too cool, right? So the sun is coming up. It is giving us a little bit of warm glow, but it's uh, represented with this pink color that I added. And of course, warm glow can be very intense if we're painting um, electrical light or if we're painting candlelight. And candles will be the warmest, right? They, they warm up everything. So this is another popular tutorial that I have on YouTube. Uh, this uh, still life, I did use a lot of yellow and you see I have yellow on the painting basically under all the objects and under the window frame because otherwise I will not be able to depict that warm glow of electric lights and the candles. So very important uh, to know um, how to start, you know, to get the result that you want. And a couple more examples of candlelight. This one, so yellow on the painting under everything, gives me, um, helps me to create um, the illusion of candlelight. And in my class, um, what are called greeting cards that I published recently, there is a whole lesson on painting candlelight, if you guys are interested. Uh, it's on my website, kseniaanis.com, and it will be on sale on Black Friday as well. So this one, and this is one of my uh, very popular tutorials as well, this um, candle. It, the whole center, the whole um, focal point required yellow on the painting to create that warmth. If I didn't do it, it will look like this. It will look wintry. So, alrighty, that's what I wanted to show you. My painting dried a little bit. Let me hit it with a, my gun just for a second, guys. I also wanted to tell you, um, we're not going to do live session next Saturday because we're going to have uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in the United States. Uh, I think everybody will be busy with families. Uh, I have some plans too, but um, in December, I mean, December is busy month too, and you can let me know in the chat box, guys, what your plans are, what you're thinking about, how much time you will have to paint. I thought maybe doing one in December, and then we will reconvene after all the holidays, like in maybe middle January, and um, do something then, because holidays are just crazy. Everybody, we have travel plans, and everybody has 
stuff to do so I didn't want to you know distract you too much already so yeah let me know um, we'll probably do one in December keep an eye out so that's why it's a good idea to sign up on my website for it's not a newsletter I just send notifications when I have live sessions I have new classes published uh, new ebooks so I don't spam anybody if you want to sign up on my website you will get notifications about what I plan and when I plan to go live and what the subject will be the you know materials reference photo everything just easier for us to communicate if you want to do that all right we need to paint snow right that's why we started that whole scene so we need some snow and I'm going to paint it with white gouache my brand is M Graham it's artist gouache uh, the color is titanium white and what does it mean artist gouache it means that the binder in this gouache is the same as in watercolor it's just the color particles are ground larger than watercolor so it becomes opaque and I can use it on top of watercolor I can mix it with watercolor and I can paint watercolor on top of this gouache another type of gouache that uses gamma arabic as binder is designer gouache right and there is also acrylic gouache which is different it's like opaque acrylic paint you can use it if that's the only thing you have but you will not be able to add watercolor on top of it most likely because it will create a film seal kind of your paper and watercolor will not go on top of it anymore so you have to be careful with that another opaque white and i think will work very well for this will be um, white ink i have dr page martin's pen white uh, it's fairly opaque you might have to use a couple of layers of this but I think this will work as well and I know a lot of people have um, um, the Chinese white or opaque white that comes with watercolor so it's opaque white watercolor uh, that's probably not going to work too well for this painting because it just has a little bit of transparency and we're trying to cover fairly dark colors here so it just might not be able to do that um, and I know you know people sometimes get just a set of watercolors and that white comes with it but uh, this giant tube let me show you a new one I have it right here this giant tube of this is highest quality gouache that you can get and it's, it's super nice um, I got it I believe on Amazon and it was like uh, 15 or 18 dollars so this will last you months if not years so I think it's a good investment actually to get this uh, in its large size it's um, a two ounces so it's 59 milliliters uh, this this will last you for a long long time and you will have no problem painting white with it so just invest a little bit in something like that and I think you will really enjoy painting with it all right let's paint the snow so to see the snow the good idea is to squint when looking at your reference photo and that will that way will be it will be easier to see what we need to paint and also um, when we apply gouache I'll show you closer guys because I didn't use uh, a lot of water on the brush and I didn't add a lot of water to gouache I'm getting that kind of dry brushing effect almost so it creates really realistic edge on the snow that's why I think using gouache is a good idea for this subject and why I think it's going to work really well and also we need to um, think about painting this kind of negatively see how I'm trying to feather out my brush strokes right away I will do some more with watercolor too but um, you want because you're painting white you want to kind of integrate it into darker areas not with a straight line but with you know create those shapes of pine needles so. So this will be a big white shape and if I need to cover a slightly larger area I can add a little more water to my white gouache and good idea to turn the brush on the side to get those you know kind of in between those pine needles okay. 
Okay, need to break this up. So see, I'm kind of negatively painting my pine needles. Oh, hi, Anne. I guess Hill Country in Texas is getting some rain, too. I think it rains all over Texas, basically, today. We have a big system coming through. Okay, and there is a little bit of snow here. Some here. Just a little bit here on the branch. And did I tell you guys I have a class actually on using opaque white with watercolor? It's called Paint Like the Masters. This is an ancient, ancient, old technique, right? Artists in 18th, 19th century painted like this. So I created a class how to use this technique. I use um, flowers as the subject, but as you see, this technique basically works for any subject matter. So lots of classes on my website. You might want to go and check them out, see if any of them interest you. Um, and wait for Black Friday sale because we will have good prices there. Maybe a little bit here, maybe a little bit on this side. I know a lot of you already bought my classes. I'm enjoying seeing all the artwork you post on social media. By the way, if you post, tag me. I'm Tamarup Studio on social media. Uh, so I will be able to see your classes. And while I have my white on my brush, guys, let's create kind of like falling snow. It's not on the reference photo, but I think it will be good. I'm going to dilute my gouache in this case. I need to switch to a different brush. This angle brushes are not good for splattering. I'm going to take my little mop brush, more water, and let's create the snow. Okay. And you see the painting already is coming to life, right? It's not so dark anymore and it, it's kind of taking shape. Trying to unify some shapes so it's not create those holes, you know, those lighter areas that we see in the reference photo. If your splattering is too regular or too kind of defined, we can also sp sprinkle it with water and that will soften it. All right, those pine cones are super dark, so I want to do something with them. Um, I am going to, I have some white gouache, I am going to mix it with uh, orange, with my burnt orange. It's a good idea not to poke your dirty brush, your white brush into your colors. Sometimes I do that, you can clean them out later, but I'll wash it and I'm going to pick up a lot of orange pigment and mix it into my gouache. I might need to add some gouache, I think it's too thin, maybe not. Okay. Um, and let's paint those highlights on the pine cones. You're probably wondering why I made them so dark, but I had a plan. <laughs> can put a highlight on this branch even. So going in um, checkerboard pattern, right? Because that's how those pine cones work and try not to make this too kind of regular because you know nothing in nature is super regular and we can invent some branches if we wanted to maybe one here maybe something here we don't really have to tell viewers you know this was a pine needle or something as long as we have enough information for them to understand what's going on this will be quite sufficient for good results in our painting so i'm hinting at stuff without kind of doing it too much in your face direct this one this way all right so as you see the painting is starting to take shape 
I'm going to pick up some more whiter kind of mixture from my cup. I want to add more highlights on the pine cones in just a few spots, not too many. Okay, give them even more shape. And I need to do something with this. This doesn't look right yet. Let's uh, think about what we can do. We can pick up some intense green and try to add a few details. Those uh, pine needles that stick out of the snow, I try to paint them negatively, but it's hard, right? I didn't quite do it. I'm going to switch to my dagger brush. This is a um, quarter inch little brush. I'm going to wet it. Oh, well, Mona Lisa is in Bahamas. Cool. Watercolor unites everybody. Eleni is in Greece. Wow. Okay. We do have international audience today. We have people from all over the world. Oh, Mona Lisa, you like this? Yeah, Princeton. Yeah, it's a really good brush. Uh, and it's comparatively inexpensive, I think. All right. I'm going to pick up some of my Cascade Green. It's nice, intense color. And I'm going to add some details on the pine needles. And because I used artist gouache, I can paint on top of it with no problem. And if gouache is not dry yet, it kind of mixes with watercolor and it's, you know, works to my advantage as well because I'm creating kind of lighter pine needles that way. So people say, you know, I don't like gouache because uh, when you paint on the layer that you already put down, it picks up the underlying layer, but you, we can use it to our advantage too. Just need to be aware of it and kind of, you know, use it to create different effects in the painting. Some more here, there's some sticking out. Just trying very hard not to make stuff parallel. If you watch my videos, guys, you know, I always talk about it, how I like to paint things very regularly and I don't want that in my, it's good in architectural drawings, but you don't want that in, in your paintings. So I need to make a conscious effort to make things go different ways and kind of look interesting and varied. This kind of bothers me a little bit. I'm going to feather this out a little more. That's what happens when you use a brush that's too thick. You can't get the right edge, but you can always go over one more time and make a little correction. It's not a problem. Okay, what else we see? We see some branches here. Not branches, pine needles. Okay. Maybe smooth this out a little bit. Snow has texture as well, right? It will have a tiny amount of light and shadow. So again, watercolor can help us to achieve that. If we mix just a little bit of it into that snow that we painted. Well, I think we're getting close, guys. What do you think? So I think it's almost done. Just soften some areas, unify some areas. I think I want something more going on on the bottom here. Let me get to it and just let me do something else here. Get back some of my pine needles. So I think you can do this with white ink because white ink is water soluble and you can paint on top of it. So you don't have to use gouache. It might be a little more transparent. That's the only thing. Okay. Let's use this for splattering as well, guys, because there are those distant branches and I think we can 
take advantage of that kind of warmer glow in the distance. And if something falls where you don't want it to fall, just pick it up with a clean paper towel. Make sure it's clean because I've applied unwanted paint <laughs> in, in some places. If you watched my lives, you remember I had a bit of a brush of disaster too because I didn't realize my paper was dirty and I had some brush of particles and I started painting on it and it all activated. So just move, you know, keep moving with it and make it part of your painting. Okay, so some kind of falling snow. Another way diluted gouache, we can use it to lighten certain areas, kind of bring back the white of the paper. So let's do this, kind of unite, unify the, connect the brushes to the bottom edge of the paper. And of course, I don't want these hard edges. So I am going to soften them. Get really interesting effects when you spray gouache with water. And I have a dry, soft dry brush. I'm going to just uh, soften the edges a little more and kind of mix it into, into my painting. And that kind of makes those branches push back a little bit and we can soften that distant branch as well because this is our focal point, right? This is forward and this already goes back so we don't need this super defined. Okay. What do you guys think? I think it's done. It's wet, so I'm sure it's a little bit hard for you to see. There is some glow, some glare of water, but this is basically our snow scene. Um, let me check guys to make sure maybe I can answer some uh, questions. Yeah, the, the recording will be available on my YouTube channel, Learn to Paint with Ksenia Anis, and on Facebook, uh, Tamara Up Studio on my page. Uh, and there will be, I think Facebook does uh, subtitles uh, right away. And on YouTube, they need to process it for, I think, a day or two. And then there will be some closed captioning available as well if you need that. Uh, but yeah, recording is available indefinitely. All right. Um, I don't see any question, guys. Let me um, make sure on Facebook. Yeah, I think everybody just saying thank you. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, guys. If you have some ideas for future ones, let me know in comments uh, on YouTube or on Facebook. doesn't matter. Tag me if you paint the snow scene. Uh, Tamer Up Studio uh, is my... Uh, that's who I am on social media. It's right here on your screen. Uh, I will... I hope everybody in the States or who celebrates will have a good Thanksgiving next weekend. And I will see you in December. I will announce that live, just uh, keep an eye out for my social media posts and for my uh, newsletter, for my emails. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining me today on this rainy day here in Houston. And I'll see you um, soon and have good holidays. Bye-bye.